Hey guys, welcome to another stream. I'm going to be working on the uh, physics gun level. There's a couple of fixes I want to make. Um, they're right here, these two. Um, what we're going to do first is allow the player to uh, you know, constantly bring out crates, or barrels I should say. Because right now if you press it once, you know, nothing, you know, that gets it, but then if you press it multiple times, something happens. Um, but then eventually you can go ahead and use this to solve a puzzle. But what we want to do is allow the player to spawn uh, barrels multiple times, uh, but only still have one. Um, so the whole time he'll have one, but say, for example, we have this done. Say we have this barrel out. If we press this button again, I want another barrel to spawn in, and then this one disappears. So that's what we're going to work on right now. So let's go into Kismet, and this is just also uh, sticking with the theme of level streaming. This is just the room 2 level I have, and it has its own Kismet, so that's what we're going to focus in now. Let's find the section that spawns the crate. Here it is. No, not crate, but the barrel. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead. And what we do here, what I have set up right now, there's just a crate waiting for it to drop in. So let me, just, if you can see right there, there's the crate. Um, but we don't want to do that. Uh, the method that we want to do to go about doing this is instead delete that. Yes. Instead of doing that, let's create a path node. Let's right click, add actor, add path node. Whoops. Where did that go? Let's try that again. Add actor. Add path node. Here we go. There we go. So now that we have the path node there, that's where the actual cranes could be spawning from. Let's go back into Kismet. Let's go ahead and delete. One of these guys. Oh, we're gonna keep the sounds here. What's this one? Oops. Alright, that's the button being used. Okay, so what we're gonna do, every time that trigger, basically this trigger right here, every time that trigger is used, uh, we want a couple things to happen. First, obviously, is gonna be the sound that you actually press the button. But the next one we're going to do, we're going to do new action, actor, actor factory. Uh, it's going to be a big sequence, so let's go ahead and make more room for it. <clears throat> we want to go ahead and spawn an actor. And then when it's finished, we want to play that body impact noise. Um, but this is the meat of what we need to do here. So let's go into Actor Factory. Under Factory, let's get that blue drop down. Gotta get to UTK Actor Factory. Um, let's also go into our content browser. Let's get that barrel. Let's grab that. And then back into Kismet. In our Actor Factory, let's scroll down to Static Mesh. Um, want to do no encroach check, collision type, block all, and start awake. That's exactly what we want. And then for spawn point, let's get our path node here. Right click on spawn point, do new object var using path node underscore zero. And now we need more variables. Uh, we're going to make an object variable for this uh, barrel. So let's right click, new variable, object, and then object, it's going to be an empty blank variable, which is fine. Uh, but what we're going to name this is barrel. Then let's right click, let's do a new variable, let's do a named variable. Let's make it an object, name it barrel. And basically that's all we need to do to spawn the barrel, and that's only to spawn it once. Uh, but let's go ahead and check it out, see if it works. Alright, so we know it spawns, but there is a problem. Um, let's see if we can 
perhaps rotate it. Maybe not. Hmm. Wonder if how the spawn points facing alters how it spawns. I'm curious. Nope, not really. Hmm. There should be a way. If there isn't, that's stupid, but there has to be a way to give it a sip. Like initial. Um, kind of like orientation, right? Let's see. Doesn't look like it. That's weird. How about we just make it slightly smaller so that you can take it out of the hole? Or what we can do instead. make this a larger hole like so let's build that then let's adjust that size there we go let's see if that works does work. Okay, let's see if it does it at a uh, normal scaling. That's a big enough. Ah, almost. <laughs> Alright. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Should be enough. Now let's just drag this guy up. That's enough. And let's just drive you up a bit more. Oops. That's good. Build. Now let's go ahead and adjust the height again for this. Now let's see. There we go. Perfect. Um, but now. Um, Gotta go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. All right, that's good. Uh, but we also should make a volume here. Let me see what's the size of this. By default, 32, 256, 256, okay. Oops. Okay. Now let's adjust this volume here to fit. What we're going to do is put a blocking volume in such so the player can't jump in there. Let's go with the blocking volume. Yeah, let's go ahead and adjust what can pass through. Collision, block, hmm, block all. There should be a way. Um, to tell it to not block uh, K actors, something like that. Let's see, does it have the word player in it? How about pawn? Alright, collision component, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, it's gonna be under the collision. Pawns only. Let's see if that means what we think it means. It 
does so far. Check block actors. Oh. What? How am I able to get through? I was just able to get through, right? Am I like breaking it? I'm kind of confused, but let's try that again. That's weird. Okay. Let's keep looking. What does this block zero extent? Give me a description. Ugh, I hate when they don't give you a description of anything. <laughs> Collide with channels. Here you go. Collide with pawn. Blocking volume. Collision type. Custom. Default. Let's see if that changed anything. It does block it. But it's still... Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see. This blocking volume is annoying. Try that again. Oh, I'm spawned down here. Alright. Oh my god, this is annoying. Um, let's see. Okay. I can go through. Alright, now both of us can go through. Okay, now I just gotta stop me <laughs> from going through. Let's try to find it. Pawns only. Yeah. Let's see. Let's try this again. Alright. So I can't get through. Oh yeah, we did it. <laughs> we are the coolest. Cool. So we got that set up, which is always a good thing. But now we gotta go back into Kismet here. We're gonna need some more variables here. Let's go and uh, do a new variable, object, object list, name this uh, number of barrels, let's also copy and paste this, change that to an object list, change this to number of barrels. So now we have our object list. Now let's go ahead to new action, object list. Modify object list, put it add to list, put, it, put number of barrels in our object list, and then barrel 
Oops. Let's just do barrel. Um, let's actually change this name. Instead of number of barrels, let's do barrel list. But then let's also create another int. In this integer number of barrels. Default is zero. Copy and paste this. Then an int number of barrels. Put that in there. Now this is where we need to actually do initial conditions. Let's put these over here. New condition, comparison, compare int. And then the first integer is number of barrels. Second one is one. So we only want the kit player to have one barrel at a time. So let's go ahead, let's go new, let's do the remote events here. So event, activate remote event, let's do uh, spawn barrel. So if A is less than B, we're going to spawn the barrel. Now let's right click, new event, remote event, spawn barrel. And then start that out. So let's move this over here. But now we need another remote event. Let's do uh, remove barrel. So we're going to call this remove barrel anytime A is greater than or equal to B. So number of barrels is one or more. Now let's right click. Actually, let's just copy and paste this remote event. Name this remove barrel. Update that. Now, what we need to do copy and paste that. Let's remove from list. And then let's go ahead and call spawn barrel. But let's have a delay of about a like about 0.5 seconds, something like that. Let's do that correctly. And then we should be good to go. That should allow us to only have uh, one barrel at a time. Let's go ahead and test this theory. Here's our barrel. Use it again. Wait, let me see that. Can we use that trigger multiple times? No. Set that it is zero. Now we can use that trigger infinite amount of times. Let's try that again. There's our barrel. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Breaking it a bit. Okay. Um, I think I know what we need to do. Do new action actor destroy. Let's go ahead and destroy the barrel. Once the barrel is destroyed, let's do another 0.5. That's when we'll go ahead and activate that. So now it should be working. Let's try that again. And it's working! Yay! So say for example the player can't get to the barrel anymore for one reason or another. You go ahead and just get a new one. Whoa! How did that happen? Let's 
let's do one second. Let me go ahead and do loops here. Alright, let's try that again. That's weird that we got two barrels at one time. Okay, so those loops not doing us any favors. Let's try um, trigger used. Trigger delay, let's do one second. Maybe that's what it was. Working now. Let's try it again here. Perfect. So that's working, but this doesn't have collision, just noticed. Let's give it collision. Block all. Okay. And now we want to. Uncheck damage applies impulse. I'm not sure why I think it's okay up here just to get the shadows from it. Let's go ahead and not make that a K actor. Let's right click on it. Let's go to convert. Let's convert that to a static mesh mover. There we go. Now it shouldn't be a problem. There we go. And we're good to go. Alright, awesome. So let's go ahead and just build that. And we can also check that off our list. Allow barrel to respawn. Got that done. We got skills. <laughs> Whoops. Now we're just going to build this real fast. And once this is done, we'll do the opening cinematic. And I also have a good idea for this, too. Uh, I'm actually going to give you a physics gun, but it's not going to be an actual an actual model or anything. Well, it's going to be a model, but you're not going to see it when you pick it up. You're just going to still be just front first person here. That's good. Let's save it. Now let's see if it's uh, working in our hub world correctly. Okay. Okay. So let's jump in here real fast. So we see that it's updated. Let's just check. Alright, cool. We know that's working. So that's perfect. Now, let's see if there's any stack meshes for weapons. Weapon. No. How about gun? Oh, uh, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. Let's try a weapon again. Um, skeletal? Okay. Okay. So, we'll just pretend that's a physics gun. Oh, 
the right here for the player. Let's also put a volume around this. And let's just make that volume, I don't know, 128 by 128 by 128. Alright, let's just make that trigger volume. Well, actually, before we do that, let me make the current level room 1. Now let's give them a trigger volume. Actually, let me save everything. Let me go ahead and open up room 1 first. Uh, save. Okay, so I'll just put the weapon back like we just did. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's make that trigger volume. Now we have a trigger volume, which is awesome. Now what we need to do uh, is basically make an event so that when you touch that volume, the weapon's going to disappear and you're actually going to be given the physics gun. So we, the way we got to do that, first we got back into the main world. Go into the kids mat here. I can paste that. Actually, let's just cut that. Save. Go to room one. Select our new trigger volume. Right click, new event, touch. It's only going to be touched once. But then from there, this is what we're going to do. First, going to destroy this actor. We make room. All right, new action: actor, destroy. And then the skeletal mesh. Let's see if that's working so far. Okay, that is perfect. So let's go ahead. Levels. No, oh, this is room one. Okay. Let's see if that's working. Let's go into the main world. What could those be? Hmm. Let me look. Kismet. Gotcha. Okay. Let's go back. Main world. Let's go to Kismet. So the target is this one. What's this particle emitter? Ah, uh, it's a smoke column. Should be another particle in here. Let me get that. 
Let's do sparks. Spark. Yeah. this okay perfect now let's take all these particles go into kismet and let's attach them and the target is going to be this one um, but let's also like these emitters Four, turn off auto activate. Now we gotta go into uh, into whoops. Can't see it. Why? Oh, uh, let me go ahead and copy and cut that. Now, let me see if I can save it. Okay, perfect. Let's go back into room one. Save. Oops. Okay. Save. Let's go back to the main world. Cut these guys out here as well. Put go back to room one. Delete these guys. Attach them again. New event, level loaded. Okay, perfect. Put those down there. this one. All right, let's go into this matinee. Let's close that. Right click. Actually, let me select these. Right click. Actually, let's just select one of them. Right click. And new part of the group. Sparks. What did I just do here? <laughs> okay. Get these. Actually, Oop. Okay. get those, get that off, and there we go. Let's see if that looks any good. No, they don't really attach, do they? Hmm. Is that a movement track?
two seconds, okay. Now let's see. There we go, that works. Save that, let's go to world properties. Also for this one, go to default. And check no default for inventory. Save. Now when I spawn. Do I, do I automatically have why do I automatically have a physics gun? That's uh, that's probably why. Okay. <laughs> Actually before I delete that. Now I can delete that. Let's try it playing again. Yep. Click from here. Now we don't have anything. Ooh. Cool. Now, right click, new action. Let's do a voice announcement, play announcement, uh, physics, gun. Yeah, it's acquired. Let's do that. And now I also want to go ahead and play a sound just so it sounds like yeah, you picked up a weapon or something. So let's go into sounds. Let's try to pick up. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, let's use that one. So let me move this back. Right click, new action. Sound, apply or play sound. Out, that. Then play that sound, and then say physics gun acquired. So let's give that a try. Yay! So that's good. Let me just, uh... Okay, so that's good, but now I want to give this um, a particular material here. Ah, shoot. How do I tell what material it has? Oh, there's a mesh. Scale to mesh, uh, materials. Here we go. Okay. Alright. Let's go to its main material. Okay. So that's oh geez. <laughs> okay, so let's keep that there. Now let's do a pickup. So let's go ahead and do this. We're basically going to give the gun an overlay like that just so you can see it better. Okay, so that's going to go in the, the diffuse.
Okay. Let's see, no to that. But let's go back into our content browser. Let me get back to that pickup. Let's right click, do a new material instance, physics. Ah. Physics, level materials, materials, and now let's do mat underscore inst underscore physics gun glow. Alright, so here's our material instance. Let's get our diffuse back. That's good. Now, let's go ahead and get let's see. I'm not going to get too fancy, but here's the emissive. Both. And now let's get the normal map. There we go. So that's definitely enough. That's all you really need to have for that. Alright, so let's go into our physics and gun environment. Let me fully load everything. Let me also save it. Oh, don't crash. Please don't crash. <laughs> there we go. Let's go under materials. Uh, let's do material instances. There it is. Perfect. Select that. Let's go into here. And let's go to material. Let's see if this works. Perfect. So now you can see it even better. Cool. Uh, but let's go into that material real quick. Is there a way to make that brighter? Our pulse color. Hmm. Let's make it green. How about we do that green color? And then is there a. No, there's no emissive boost, so let's go ahead to 10, 50, 10. And then let's put a light in here. Let's change the scale of it just so it's a good size for it. And its properties, we're going to make it a green color. Obviously, we're only going to make this a 128. Let's try number two. Let's also make this a dynamic light. Convert point light, point light toggleable. And now what we're going to do, right click, new action, toggle, toggle, turn off. Target point light. Let's also give it a what are those called? Uh, 
Oh, I'm drawing a blank. What was those things called? I did a tutorial on them. I have to go into the properties to remember. Yeah, light function. There we go. Um, flicker. Go into this. Let's change this property a bit. And we're going to try to clamp it between 1 and 0.5 just so it doesn't go fully dark. And then, nice. That's weird. That's good. Now let's make that a light function. Cool, that synced up perfectly. But we should actually just make it zero. There we go. Let's make this like 10. Awesome. That's looking pretty sweet. So let's try playing. Pick it up. Boom. You're all set with that. So let's save it. Let's also build lighting here real quick. And then the next thing we're going to do is the opening cinematic but before i do that i'm gonna get a drink i'm thirsty i'll be back All right, thanks for waiting. Let's see here. That does not matter. So now it's time to actually do uh, the cinematic. So I'll just save that real fast. So it is kind of dark over here, actually. Let's do a fill light. Make it like a bluish color. And uh, make it about like 12. Seven sixty eight, maybe four. All right, that's enough for that. But let's go ahead and make this cinematic. So let's first get a camera in there. Um, 
this camera really not in there? Okay. Oops. Let's go into content browser, actor classes, camera. Camera actor. Let's add a camera actor here. Okay, we want it to start facing up, just so we can see it there. Let's go into Kismet, um, let's just do this as um, just fix this actually. Uh, physics gun. Oops. I can't spell. Pick up. Okay. Now, honestly, it's going to be a new event level loaded. And then it's going to be a matinee. And we're going to play that matinee. So now let's double click, get matinee open, right click, and new camera group. Let's do opening cinematic underscore camera. Okay. Now let's do add new director group. Oops, no. No. Ah. There we go. so hard working with just one screen because the other screen has has you guys over here and I don't want you to miss anything All right. so at the beginning of the director group obviously you want to have it fade in and new fade track And I'm going to fade it back in. Kind of want to have you got kind of like waking, like kind of like you're waking up. Okay. And then during that time, I'm going to add, move the camera. This time you want to kind of just be looking over here. Let's see what that looks like.
put that at five seconds. Oops, it's got the fade track here. Let's make it brighter. Ah, whoops. Okay, now the next five seconds. That's pretty good. See what that looks like. That's pretty good. Cool. Now let's go ahead and um, see if we can't add like depth of field or anything. Is it out of that? Okay. Camera actor do one. Whoops. I wonder if that still works. Ah. Okay, so gotta move you back to where you were. That's kind of annoying. What? Where's the camera? I'm confusing myself. <laughs> okay, well, we obviously know that's not good so far, but let's see if we can fix that. In action, toggle, 
systematic mode. All players, and then play. And then disable. Once it's completed, it should tail us be where we want it to. So let's see that. Why is, it sh why is the player showing up? That's what I want to know. Let me first go into the main world here and see if the cinematic's even working in the main world. <laughs> Play. Alright, let's see. I see that's a problem. <laughs> Try just player zero. Is that correct? Anything? Let's see. <laughs> All right. Something's causing this. <clears throat> mess up. I'm not too sure. New action, toggle. I wonder if I can hide the player. Too. Like, this should hide the player. But, let's go ahead and just hide them anyway. Let's try that again. You. <laughs> Why? Hmm. Why is this happening? Now I'm kind of confused. I guess we'll have to figure that out uh, next time. Go ahead and just keep working on the cinematic for the time being. We don't need that anymore. Just enable all these properties for the camera. Material. No, that's a material. Dirt, that's a material. Right click. It should be just uh, add float property track.
see how we got death and field work in. Nice. All right, what other float property tracks can we do? <laughs> I think there's a gradient, I think. Yeah, image grain. That doesn't really do much, huh? It's trying a lot. Nope, that does not do anything. Delete that one. Float. <clears throat> Did motion blur. Mm -hmm. Let's try, I don't know, ten. That doesn't do much. Mm -hmm. Try adding the property protract. Tone mapper. I wonder what that does. Let's find out. No. Oh, okay. What's negative one do? <laughs> Makes it completely dark. Okay. Was pretty sweet. Float pro property track. Try bloom scale. Like I'm assuming when you wake up, things are a little saturated. Again. What else? Under a vector. Hmm. No. Let's try another float property track. Make it a little desaturated at the start. Okay, five is going to be pretty. That might be too much. Let's try point two. Now we'll do point one. Now we're gonna be full on one or zero, I should say. So get back up and running there. What other things can this one do? No, it doesn't do anything we want. Let's do another float property. Let's see what other ones we have. Let's start mobile. Do I have motion blur on right now? Yeah, I do. We have the cinematic good to go. So let me save that. Let's try playing it. Okay. So that's what we want, but we're still getting spawned in. Right now, right in there, <laughs> right on, right on you. <laughs> How do I stop that from happening? 
I'm not too sure. I'll have to figure this out on my own. It may take a little time to figure out. I don't want to waste your guys' time, but we did do what we wanted to do, make that opening cinematic. So we can cross that off the list as well. Okay. So that was a fun stream. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, you know, I did. You know, I did some cool things. Um, some things I wasn't sure I was able to do, but we got everything going with that. Um, so I'll see you on the next stream, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.